Good morning, the Harders. She's ready to live free or die hard. Oh, feels good to be back. Oh, oh if I seem more exuberant and sound a lot clearer than I normally do, it's because, well, I'm just coming off a bad cold, man. My head was kind of stuffy and my voice was kind of off back during that period, but I'm back. Oh, the show god is back. And I'm just about, <laughs> oh, uh, I should be really bummed right about now, because the movie I'm reviewing in this episode isn't, well, it wasn't as great as I wanted it to be, and it damn sure, well, uh, but on the bright side, it's not as bad as everyone said it was. It has, it's got its moments. I'll give it that, it's got its moments. Uh, the movie that I'm talking about in question is Morbius. Yeah, that's right. Jared Leto's Morbius. Uh, <clears throat> oh. Well, that is what I'll be reviewing in this week's episode. In this today's episode. Why am I saying this week's episode? Like, this is a regular thing. It's not. I mean, it's a pretty random thing. But anyway, um, sit back, relax, and listen to the dulcet tones of my voice as I review... Uh, the latest addition to Sony Spider-Man Universe, which is Morbius, right here on the SNW Experience Podcast review, and here we go. This is the non-spoiler review of Morbius right here on the SNW Experience Reviews. Right out of the gate, I need to say, get, this movie's not nearly as bad as people say it is, but it's not as great as I thought it'd be. You know, um, some sequences didn't, okay, I'm gonna start with the negatives, man. This story, there's a lot of stuff that pops up in the trailer. But doesn't pop up in the movie. Like, there's a scene... Uh, uh, yeah, that's one thing. There are scenes in the trailers that aren't in the movies. Um, soundtrack's nothing special. You know, normally a superhero movie has, like, that one dope song that really sticks out. You know? Especially when it's, like, the real hero moments. And, you know, like, the hero has, like, this moment where he's overcoming the villain. There's this kick-ass song playing in the back. This movie didn't have that. Uh, pacing seemed to be, not pacing, but, like, themes seemed to be all over the place as, like, the, I don't think the movie re like, the trailer was like, yo, the line between hero and villain is gonna be blurred, you know, like, like, this is a movie about a guy who's gotta feed on blood to survive, and, you know, he, he's like, I can't control, like, he, you, like, he's struggling to control it. And we never really get that sense, you know? Never really get that sense that he's struggling that much. Like, he might seriously hurt the people he holds dear. That's kind of, like, spoiler, but yeah. Um, negatives, and, um... Yeah, score wasn't that great. The story felt kind of rushed, in a sense, you know? Like, the movie... The movie didn't feel, I mean, don't get me wrong, the movie wasn't long, but, like, it felt like the movie was speed running through moments. Like, it, it was almost ticking off boxes. Like, okay, dude's sick, check. The established relationship between hero and villain, check. Establish that hero is dying, check. Establish he's found the cure, you know. Like, it, was, it kind of felt like it was checking off boxes. Like, once the guy actually got his powers, then the movie can start. Everything before that just felt like, all right, let's just get through this as quick as possible so we can get to the meaty stuff, you know, the stuff people want to see. Um, Jared Leto's performance as Michael Morbius was, um, I don't know. It's not like when he was Joker. I mean, he's got a whole movie to himself, and as a good guy, was there this there wasn't really a feeling where I was like willing him on, you know, like 
man, like, go get them. You know, just, you know, that's kind of what you want. Like, when the hero is facing off against the villain, you really want them to succeed. You know, like, you want them to overcome this obstacle. But, you know, once he got the serum and he got healthy, I don't know, I just felt like it was a case of, well, what now? You know, it's not... You know, normally when, in a uh, Marvel hero story, when the hero gets his powers, he decides to, like, fight crime, but Mar- Morbius gets his ability, and... I don't know, like, when you become... Normally in a vampire movie, when someone becomes a vampire and they realize they gotta feast on blood, they do something about it. This movie just sort of felt like it was in a... It was, like, in a, doing a holding pattern, essentially. Until, like, the antagonist presents itself. But, like, you know, all that aside, those are the negatives. These are some positives. Um, the action scenes, you know, the scenes where, like, Morris is actually, like, fighting off dudes is pretty, were pretty good, actually, surprisingly. The scene on the boat, you know, the, the movie had surprisingly good action. Scene on the boat, uh, when he's fighting those regular guys. The end fight, um, even though it wrapped up too quickly, you know, was it was it was serviceable. Did what it needed to do, and you know, Jared Leto's performance was better than his Joker in Suicide Squad. Uh, Matt Smith's performance as the villain was, uh. Yeah, it's what you would expect from that kind of character, you know, like a, a character who for the longest part of his life didn't have any power and most people had power over him is now who has this sudden power and, you know, he, you know, that's, it plays out as you expect it would. Um, the lady who was the love interest was Maurice's assistant. She, hmm. Yeah, it was a case, it was more of a case of, there weren't really many standout performance, any standout performance outside of the main villain. Everyone else just did the role that they were tasked with, you know, the movie did its job. And I'm just rambling on at this point, you know, this is non-spoiler review, I'm gonna really dig into this in the spoiler review, but forget all that, you want the non-spoiler ratings of this movie? Well, here it is. Oh, man, forget that. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. No, that was just a little riff on Tony Baker's going like, you want to hear the smooth jazz review? It was like, and he'd be like, oh, man, forget that. Oh, oh man, but just, nah, nah, nah. I'm giving Morbius a 5.9 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. Movie wasn't nearly as bad as I thought, as people say it was, but it also wasn't nearly as good as I thought it would be, or it could have been. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Roughly, I'm giving this movie roughly a 2.9 out of 5 stars, which and she equates to a 5.9 out of 10, let's say bats, you know, 5.9 out of 10 bats. So that's it. Uh, stick around. Here is the spoiler review. Um, coming up next, you know, if you, this this section is, you know, if you haven't seen the movie but you want to find out about it, and, you know, and you still want to see it later without spoilers, listen to this section. If you, oh, you can check out now. Feel free to check out now and go see the movie and come back to hear the rest of this, or just listen to it. But hey. Here comes the spoiler review right about now. Three, two, one. Uh, here was the sounds of all your ears. <laughs> it was acceptable at the time. I love that show, man. I love OSW Review, man. They're fucking great dudes. But anyway, um, the reason I'm doing this, the reason that opened with that singing thing, I don't know if I'm going to get copyrighted for that. I hope not. But the um, reason I opened with that is because I'm going to give you some background. Before we get into the actual meatiness of it all, I'm going to give you some background on the movie that's going on. 
<clears throat> this is all according to Wikipedia, so take it with some salt. Heavy dose of spice, too. I'm just playing. There's very little spice. This movie does not have spice. It's all salt over here. There were several attempts to bring Morbius to the big screen since 1998, including the Blade franchise. Yeah, because there was a scene in the, the first Blade movie, or they were supposed to be, and um, ah, it was supposed to be a scene where like Blade would be on this rooftop, and then way across on another rooftop, there would be this guy with long hair and a long jacket. That guy was supposed to be Morbius, and you know, the, he was supposed to have a part in the sequel. Yeah, and, you know, he was played by the director of that movie. You know, they didn't show his face, which was, they were going to figure it out, like, later on. When they did the sequel, they were going to cast a proper guy. So, the Blade 2 movie, which is an awesome movie you should definitely check out, was originally supposed to have Morbius as his main villain instead of the vampire hybrid, we like, mutant, whatever the fuck that was. You know, instead of whatever the fuck that was being the main villain, it was originally supposed to be Blade. So, I mean, Blade versus Morbius, yeah. But that didn't happen, so. So that just fizzled. Yeah, and having a solo film produced by Artist Entertainment, neither of which came into fruition, and after announcing plans for a new shared universe of films inspired by the Spider-Man characters beginning with Venom in 2018, Sony began developing a film based on Morbius. Yeah, that's around about that time. See, because see the success of Venom, it was like, yo, we can still do this. The idea of a Spidey universe is out the window. Amazing Spider-Man 2 didn't do so great, so a Spidey universe is out of there. However, a universe feature, a universe of Spider-Man characters like Venom, you know, we have that like Venom and Craven and Madam Web. We could definitely do that. Seeing the success of Venom, they said, let's go, people, let's go. Sony began developing a film based on Morbius, you know. Sazama and Sharpless had written a script by November 2017, and Jared Leto and Daniel Espinosa officially joined in June of 2018. Work on the film began at the end of the year with further casting ahead of production starting in London in February 2019. Film was confirmed to have been completed by June 2019, with reshoots happening in Los Angeles the following February. Morbius premiered at the Plaza Carso. I'm not Avengers, what's this? Black Widow got pushed back. Everything got fucking pushed back because of this fucking pandemic. But it's coming to slowly, slowly having less and less of an effect on people's lives. And cinemas are back to, like, not full capacity, but they're running at, like, a semi-halfway full capacity, you know? Movies are back to make an absolute bank at the box office. Even though, like, during 2020, early 2021... There was this worry, like, yo, man, is the cinema experience done? Has the pandemic hastened the demise of cinema? No, but after movies like No Way Home came out and The Batman, it was like, fuck no, cinema's still going strong. You just need to put the right movie in the box office and they will come. If you build it, they will come. Like, just, oh, shit. Anyway, mm. the film received negative reviews from critics, who criticize its writing, visual effects, and especially the mid credit scenes, although Smith's performance was better received. It grossed over $162 million against the $83 million budget. That's not bad. I mean, making 160 off of $80 million, that's... Not only have you made back your budget, but you made back double the budget. So you kind of... I mean, not really. 83 does not equal 162. But, you know, you almost made back double the budget. It's not bad you know um here's the development of the film that was all pre-production no 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 that was just the thing whatever the development of the film was this yeah <clears throat> yeah I mentioned all that in may 2017 sony announced plans for a new shared universe speeding spider-man related properties in july spider-man homecoming director john watts expressed interest in featuring morbius and blade 
in the then untitled Spider-Man Far From Home, believing that the character's darker tone could work well within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Which might be why, which might explain all the fucking references in those earlier trailers, you know, it just might go some ways to explain, because like, maybe the character was supposed to be in the MCU, you know? It, but then he wasn't, and now they had to, like, hurry and change the film again, because, you know, like, it was supposed to go one way, but then it didn't, I don't know. That November, Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless submitted a script to Sony for a Morbius film. Uh, Jared Leto was loosely attached to star in the titular role, but would not commit to the film until he was happy with his direction. He also has to personally meet with several director candidates, and uh, producer Amy Pascal said in June that production had just wrapped on the project. This was, yeah, that was the production. And post-production, oh, this is where it gets interesting. This is where all the delays and the theories about, like, what if, you know, what if they're delaying it one line? Because after No Way Home came out, it was announced that this movie was delayed. One, again, and people were like, wait, why are they delaying it? You know, like, the reaction to Andrew Garfield and No Way Home meant that people, you know, liked his Spider-Man, and it caused Sony to, re- to really consider making The Amazing Spider-Man 3. And people are figuring, wait, what if they're delaying this so they can get Andrew Garfield to uh, film some scenes in this movie and make this movie a part of that universe and thus set up The Amazing Spider-Man 3? It could work, y'all. It could really be what was happening. It could be why the movie's being delayed. This could be sweet. But having seen the movie, I can honestly tell you there is no Spider-Man in here. There's no, I mean, there probably is a Spider-Man, and it probably is Andrew Garfield's universe that this movie's set in, but he's not in the movie. There's no reference of him. I mean, there's a Daily Bugle, but there's no reference of Jonah, which means that this could be the Tasm universe, because while that universe did have a Daily Bugle, there was no J. Jonah Jameson. The closest thing we got to J. Jonah in that movie was, uh, like, an email. But yeah, a little bit. Moving in, um, hmm. As part of the new agreement, Kevin Feige stated that moving forward, the MCU Spider-Man would be able to cross cinematic universes and appear in Sony's own shared universe as well. This interaction was said to be a call and answer between the two franchises as they acknowledged details between the two, what would loosely be described as a shared detailed universe. The film's first trailer, released in January 2020, included a brief appearance by Michael Keaton reprising his role as Adrian Toomes from Spider-Man Homecoming. Some of Keaton's scenes had to be reshot when the events depicted in No Way Home didn't properly coincide with Morbius. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe, because tomb scenes in the trailer and tomb scenes in the movie ain't the same, dude. They've, it is clear a lot was changed after the results of No Way Home. That, that was the issue. Anyway, such as certain mor- moments such as Morbius walking past a graffiti painting of Spider-Man, were added in the film without the director's knowledge, only to be removed in the final film. That was that scene where the director was like, they, I remember because in the interview they asked him sure, like, hey, why is there a picture of Tobey Maguire with the word murder written across him, across like that picture? And he was like, I don't know. Like, what do you mean you know? Like, shouldn't you know? You're the director. Out of anybody, shouldn't you know? You filmed that shit, didn't you? Don't you know why it's there? Like, I mean, oh, shit. Ah, whatever. But, yeah, that's the background on Morbius, the movie. You know, that's some well in background for you. So, now that you have some background on the film, I'm going to give you some background to care. Michael Morbius was a scientist who, wanted, who was dying of the disease, and he wanted to come up with a cure. So he did that. In, in the comics... He traveled up to sea and he conducted this experiment on himself with a bat. You know, strapped himself on the machine, got zapped, and there was this guy named Nikos with him. And like, and Nikos got him out of the chair. He's like, I just need, you know, I just need a rest of it, and you know, just take me somewhere else. The lights in here, they seem a bit too bright. You know, so he takes him to a dark room. They lock him in a room, and you know, like, he seems to be like going through some shit. But then Nikos opens the door only for Michael to like pounce on him and drain him of all his blood when he wakes up. He's like, oh, Nikos, my God, what have I done? You know, what have I done? You know, that, that shit, like you just killed someone you didn't, someone you actually cared about. And, you know, he, and he, he gets out of there 
and the first thought he has is, wait, you know, like, there's someone else on this yacht with us, you know, like, the, um, I think his wife at the time, you know, like, his wife was with him, and he thinks she's caring, compassionate, war, yes, war and blood flowing through the, wait, no, 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 that's wrong, it's like, if I stay here, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna kill my, my wife, I can't do that, you know, like, I gotta feed, I'm hungry, I would rather, like, like, I'd rather die than hurt her, so he casts himself out to sea, and he sinks and sinks and lets the air, lets the, the water fill his lungs. And he dies, you know, like, or at the very least, his conscience dies. Like, the human side of him kind of dies. And the vampiric side, almost like a second personality, takes over. And, like, brings him back up to shore. It's like, God, that was foolish. Like, why did I do that? That was fucking dumb. Like, I had a boat. I had everything. Now I'm swimming out in the middle of nowhere. What the fuck? What was that? And he finds this ship, this container ship, you know, it saves him from the water. While he's on that ship, um, crew members start to go missing. And they put two and two together, like, hey man, ever since we picked up the stowaway, people have been going missing. People have been turning up dead. You know, it's all because that guy, I swear, he's the one doing this, you know, let's get him. And then uh, they try to confirm him, he's like, please, please, don't, don't do that, man. I, I don't want to hurt you. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah that you don't want to hurt us. Well, we're going to fuck you up, man. Like, they didn't say that. But, like, so they try to get the dude, and he manages to, like, evade them for a bit. And then one by one by one, they all fucking die. Uh, shortly thereafter, he gets back to shore, and he, like, hides out in this house. Later on in the story, this is also the same story where Spider-Man winds up growing six arms because he tried to, like, get rid of his powers he ended up making it worse so he grows six arms and kirk connors gives him permission to stay there well you know like it's while he tries to figure this shit out but then like morbius sees him and is like what manner of place is this like a man has six arms but that costume is familiar i swear i've seen it somewhere before ah that doesn't matter i'm, I'm hungry each year i'm eating you like Frah! and they fight like, just as they're fighting and, you know, Morris is about to bite into Spider-Man, Kurt Connor shows up and is like, ah, oh, more food. But then Connor's like, hey, hey, yo, man, you, you stay back, all right? I don't want to hurt you. And it's a repeated thing on the phone because dude's like, like, <laughs> like you don't want to hurt me. Like, come, like, get real, dude. If anybody's going to hurt anybody, it's me. And put Kurt Connor transforms into a lizard and they're beating the fucking car out of each other. Until Morbius somehow gets the upper hand and he bites into the lizard, like somehow manages to bite into through like through all the scales and shit, manages to bite him, and it messes with the dude's transformation. Sure, Kurt Connors after Morbius flees, Connors transforms back into the lizard, but he only changes like halfway. You know, like his arm is gone, but like and he's like he's restored to human form, but he's just covered in scales. You know, like he's only changing halfway. The dude biting into him did something to him. And, um, so Spider Man and him have to, like, come up with a cure. Not only to cure Connors, but to, like, for, get rid of these extra limbs and shit. So, yeah, he does that. And, you know, he doesn't need help. His, like, extra limbs are, like, helping him do that. He's essentially doing the work of two people by himself. Spider Man with his six arms is able to do the work of two people by himself because he's got these extra limbs helping him and shit. Yeah, it's a cool scene. It's the introduction of Morbius in the comics. That was a cool comic book, by the way. It was, I think that comic had the return of Green Goblin, the episode where Spider-Man saves a junkie. I mean, not an episode, but like the, the story where Spider-Man saves a junkie. It was also the first like comic to uh, like properly just flub off the comics code authority. I think it was like the first comic that ever just like didn't have the seal of approval from the comics code. Like, no one, and, like, they just didn't have the seal of approval, and no one really noticed. People read it anyway. You know, like, it didn't matter anymore. It didn't hold that thing. You know, they just read the story, they love it, and they kept going with stories like that. Marvel had, in that story, there was also, I think there was also, like, a talk of, I, this is this before or after? I think it was before, I'm not sure. Whatever, whatever. There was also, like, a, a talk of, like, conditions in prison and, you know, all that. It was just, it was really good, you know, like, there was, it was a really good comic. It would also happen to feature the debut of Morbius the Living Fucking Vampire, man. 
No, it's the, not, that's, that's not his name. No, his name is not Morbius the Living Fucking Vampire. What is this? A Ampone parody or something? Well, that is an interesting porn. That would be an interesting porn parody right there. Morbius the Fucking Vampire. Just. <laughs> Sounds like a Mel Brooks or a Monty Python skit or some shit. Okay, more SNL or anything, but like, yeah. yeah moving on, uh, that was a pretty rambling piece of background, but yeah, that's why I dig the character. Um, from his appearance, the first time I saw the character in the comic to his appearance on Spider Man, uh, the animated series, to Ultimate Spider Man. You know, I just, I really dug the character of Michael Morbius, and personally, I thought if anybody could play him, uh, it would be Benicio Del Toro, because when you look at Morbius in that comic, and you see Benicio in a movie like The Hunted, or The Wolfman, it's like, yeah, I could, I could see him in that role, I could see him playing that character. But um, the studio went with Jared Leto, and you know, I can't fault them, I guess, I mean, <laughs> I kind of can, who's... I mean, okay, whatever. It's not who I wanted, but he'll do, I guess. So, yeah, there's your background. And now, on with the programming. Good morning, die Arters. Who's ready to live for your die hard with Morbius in the Sony Spider-Man universe? Or the Sony universe of Marvel characters? Or the Venom verse, or the Morbius verse, or the Amazing Spider Man universe, or wherever the fuck this movie is set in. Because I don't even think the movie knows, man. Because it's not in the MCU. That's for damn sure. It's not a part of the MCU. Because during this film, well, towards the end, there's a, a scene where the sky opens up and the, you know, the, the purple streak spreads. Just like it does in No Way, in, yeah, no Way Home. Because you know, the universes are, like, characters from that universe are turning into whatever, whatever. And Tombs shows up in the middle of a cell. He's like, hmm, hope the food's better in this joint. But then, like, you know, he, he, he's right away. They're like, oh, the mysterious man appeared from out of nowhere claiming to be Adrian Tombs. He's probably going to be released right away because well there's no records of him being arrested here and we can't keep him in his fucking cell so we just gotta let him peace out and then you know afterwards there's a scene where he shows up in the ill michael morbius is driving to the middle of nowhere and there he meets tombs in his vulture get up saying like um you know i don't know how i got here but i have i think it has to do with spider-man and you know like you and me should team up, you know. That's basically what what it is, you know. You, I think you and I should team up. How Tombs knows Michael Morbius? How Tombs like contacted Morbius? That's never explained. He just does, and he just did. Tombs just like fresh out of jail, got himself a new suit, new gear, and I will give props. This new suit does look really good. It does look like. Yo, it has like a more vultury look to it and if anything this shows that you know like they do have plans to like utilize this character somewhere down the line like perhaps in the Morbius sequel <laughs> sequel and the sign that okay this is not the MCU so and the fact that Morbius didn't immediately go like who's Spider-Man shows that there is a Spider-Man in that universe. You know, it's, it could be Andrew Garfield. Could be... No, no, no. It's not Maguire, though. That's for sure. Because... In the Maguire... Ver there's a line in the movie where... <clears throat> Morbius says, I am Venom. <laughs> you know, like, that typical vampire, like... <laughs> that sounds like a cat. You know, that thing where they show their fangs and shit, like they're about to eat you. Because in the trailer, it was like, I am Venom. And then, and like, tries to scare the He's like, I'm just kidding. It's Dr. Michael Morbius. That's your service. He doesn't do that in the movie. He, like, he does the, I am Venom. And then, yeah, But then he just lets the guy go. He's like, you can go now.
film is coming all over the place because in the trailers there were scenes that were in this film that weren't in the movie like <clears throat> Ty Tyrese Gibson specifically yeah he had a lot more to do in the trailer than he had in this movie also did in, in in the trailer there's this trailer where he's like holding his neck he's looking dead ahead and he's like you save lives you don't take them and yet and there's also a scene where the characters are like outside during the daytime seemingly on the hunt for morbius and he's got like this contraption on his arm it looks like you know like that uh some assassin's creed hidden blade shit you know I don't know, you know, like, shows that, you know, he ain't a normal cop, you know, he's not just a random detective assigned to the case, maybe, like, maybe he's part of, maybe he has, like, some, I don't know, special skill set for this kind of thing, you know, maybe, like, Mulder and Scully, him and his partner are the guys that handle the weird cases, who knows, maybe that's the thing, but we'll never know, because that scene didn't make it in the trailer, the scene where he's like, you save lives, you don't take them, that wasn't in the trailer, you know, just, ah, man, there was so much stuff in this that was not in this movie that was shown in the trailer. Also, there was no conversation between Morbius and, you know, like, the father figure that he had, you know, I don't know, was, I can't remember the dude's name, Moriarty, that's his, I'm just gonna call him Moriarty, because that's the character he played in Game of Shadows, right? The, in every trailer, there was a conversation between the two, you know, like, it's like in the first trailer it was like uh when is i don't know he asked him like when is his like search for a cure to gone too far and dude was like when the cure is deadlier than the disease in the second one he was like are you here to cure the world or like to, are you here to heal the world or are you here to hurt it you know like and the third one he was like can you control it though it's just it's key that it shows that this character is someone that Morbius really holds in high regard. It's someone that he would turn to if he was ever in trouble. However, that scene was axed. So, eesh. That means... So, this sucks because when the character dies, we don't really have that much like reason to care, you know? Even the movie, like, we see him, like, twice. Because we see him, like taking care of Morbius and, you know, Matt Smith's character, Milo, when they were kids, and then we see him taking care of Milo as an adult, and that's it. That's, that's fucking it, man. That's all we get to see of this character, man. That's all Moriarty does before he gets killed by Milo when he goes to his place to try and reason with him, you know, just, and, you know, his final words to Morbius aren't, this is, I guess, I think the movie was trying to go for, like, an Uncle Ben type situation, like, hey, a character, you care, your Uncle Ben figure was murdered by the main villain, now you have all the more reason to want to kill him, you know, but that doesn't work here, you know, we don't care for, about this character, their relationship isn't that great, if anything, the relationship between, you know, Milo and Moriarty, that relationship has been established more than Morbius has, you know, and he it's just even the reaction you know like your uncle ben figure just got killed by a dude that was like a brother to you and you're kind of just i don't know he didn't seem sad he seemed like i mean he seemed really sad but it wasn't like on the verge of tears it wasn't like oh my god don't go don't go it was just it was like oh god and it's like you know when you really don't know how to react when something happens and you don't quite know how to react so you're just i don't know they're taking it in it was like that, and he didn't really have much time to react, because immediately after that, he started hearing, like, he heard Milo's voice, and he was threatening, um, the girl, like, Morbius' assistant, he ran out to go fight them, and this scene, like, him heading out there is actually pretty solid, dude, it's like, the dude can glide on air currents, like, Morbius can glide on the air currents, he can't fly, he doesn't have wings, but he can glide on the air currents, like kind of like a bat almost you know like how well, kind of like batman in a way using like his coat and everything the movie shows like the air currents like he can glide on you know we see him running up cranes running along buildings taking these huge leaps it's pretty cool like the scenes where morbius is just a guy where he's just regular jared leto aren't that interesting but when he transforms his face changes claws come out and the action kicks in that's when this movie 
starts to work for me, you know, like the scenes when, uh, <clears throat> like when him and Matt Smith's character Milo, they, they fight and they hit towards the subway and they're like sprinting at each other with this crazy speed and they're just going wham, wham, like whooshing past people, generating this air and like when they run into something, they leave all these impacts and, and you can really feel like how hard they're hitting into each other, how powerful they must be. Because, you know, what this movie gets right is this character's speed and power. You know, it shows like, hey, if you have this level of speed and you like ram into somebody, you're going to hit really hard. Because when they're chasing each other, like down into the subway, they run into the roof, they run across the ceiling, they run along the walls. They're like slamming into each other and fighting and it's good. Even when like they've stopped and the guy's like, whoo, 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 like we have evolved. You can tell like he out of everyone here is really enjoying this. Like, yo, I don't know what movie he's from, but I, can I see that movie? Damn. Brother is really enjoying having these powers lately. That's the vibe I'm getting here. But shit, though, I mean, with Morbius, it's like, the, the, the two of these dudes are two different types of vampires. With Morbius, it's more of the, like, I don't know. With Morbius, looking at his kind of vampire, he's like Brad Pitt in Interview with the Vampire. Or, yeah, yeah, if I had to take a guess, it would be like he's Brad Pitt in Interview with the Vampire, seeing being a vampire as a curse, you know, like, he wouldn't wish this on anybody, this is terrible. And you look at, you know, Milo's reaction to it. He's, I don't know, he's more like a vampire from Blade, essentially. You know, like, he's hes more like Frost from Blade. You know, like, he fucking loves being a vampire. It's awesome. He's like, why would anyone want to give this up? This is crazy. You know, like, you, like I'm not going to go back to being who I was. Like, who I was sucked. And, you know, when you look at it, you know, how he was living, ooh, who he was really did suck, you know, like, like him and Michael were, like, they were, they were really sick, you know, they, they, they were dying, man, they were slowly dying, and, you know, now they feel more alive than they've ever felt before, and, like, who'd want to give that up? A guy, I mean, a, two guys who've never had power in their lives or experienced this level of, like, mobility and strength now have this strength, and, you know, Morbius wants to give it up, not because he hates that strength, but he hates the cost it would take to continue having that strength. Like, he can't, he can't, you know, he's a doctor. He has, like, a Hippocratic Oath to do no harm, and he can't see himself, like, just killing people on the rig. That's why he takes that artificial blood instead of, like, the regular blood from the reserves. That's why we don't see him drink from anybody outside of that boat scene, you know, like, he even says, like, what happened on that boat can't happen again, also, that boat scene was actually pretty well done, in terms of, like, a horror movie, because, like, giving the movie a horror aesthetic, that was kind of what I was looking for, you know, like, this is a movie about a freaking vampire, Let's do some horror shit, man, let's have him fucking stalking people, and, like, you know, slashing guts and ripping throats and whatnot let's see that i mean you can't have a pg rating with that you know but like you know shit and we got some of that in in that boat scene after he's transformed and he's killing people there's like a team of guys who go to investigate like what happened and this little bit of blood starts dripping from the ceiling he looks up and he's snatched and he drags another dude off into the shadows. It was cool, man. It was like a scene from Incredible Hulk where Banner transforms and he's just snatching people out of it, taking them off into the distance, chucking grown men like beanie babies and shit. It was dope. It's like, yes, yes, a bit of the old ultra violence in superhero movie. But that is a superhero movie, a vampire movie. God damn, yes. Let's go, man. Let's have the rest of the movie be like this. Shit. Whew. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie was not quite like this. Um, after the man arrives back on shore, he spends a sufficient amount of time studying his powers and understanding his limits and, you know, seeing how long he can go without blood, how long the blood lasts. It's just... 
I don't know, the movie, I get why he needs to do this, you know, just, but, uh, dude, the movie comes from stop at this point, like, jeez, dude, like, why, what, what, what is going on, why are we doing, why are we focusing on this, and it, meanwhile, everyone else, like, uh, the boat washes on shore, the doctor gets picked up by the cops, and, you know, this is when Milo's character comes into the lab and finds him like that, yeah. So, leading to that fight, leading to dude saying, all our lives we've had to deal with death. Why can't they feel for you? But, like, man, he turned to the dark side fast. Holy shit. He turned to the dark side real fast after discovering the serum. I mean, goddamn. Morbius got locked up the first time. Dude, like, went to visit him in jail, like, as an ally, gave him some blood. And, you know, when he came in, he was on his crutches. Yo, when he left, he walked out on his own two feet, you know, just full on, practically strutted out. And he was really into this shit, man. He was strutting, he was dancing, he was the, just, oh shit, man. He was like, you know, his vibe was like, oh, feel, it was like, oh, what a rush, man. Like, uh, and <laughs> he was the standout, you know, guy. In the, he was a standout performer in this movie. In a movie called Morbius, the standout character is not Michael Morbius, but the villain. You know, I get it, you know, of a good guy is only as good as his villain. And this villain was pretty good, you know. And he kind of raised the movie up from a 5.7 to a 5.9 in my eyes, you know. Well, praise be to that guy, man. He's pretty good. Anyway, <laughs> there is one thing. There's one kind of moment that sticks out. There's this moment where I think it's after he, he kills the Moriarty character. He's getting suited up. He's just, like, wearing his pants at home. And this, like, rap this song. I forget rap music is playing in the background. <laughs> like, see this dude just dancing put the shirt on, like, dancing some more, put the shoot on, dancing some more, like, while this rap music plays in the, like, like, <laughs> what is this, what, <laughs> what am I watching, what happened in the vampire movie, what is this, <laughs> like, what the hell, <laughs> oh, shit, man, it's, ah, uh, it was a nice, you know, nice little departure from the proceedings, but like, damn, dog. <laughs> anyway, the final fight, hmm, the final fight between Morbius and Milo was, it was good. You know, they were throwing each other into buildings, they were trying to claw the fuck out of each other. Morbius take, took a lot of hits. Now, it wasn't like a totally one-sided affair or anything, but like, you know, it wasn't frequent back and forth. Morbius took a lot of damage right before they got underground, and he was, like, dangling there. And he's, like, holding his stomach because he's badly injured. And that's when Milo's, like... You know, so he's doing all this. Now, that's another thing. The villain's motivations were... Didn't make a whole lot of sense because he claimed, like, hey, man, you're, you're fighting your true nature, you know? Like, this is awesome. Why can't... Like, don't say that. You're not embracing this i'm gonna teach i'm gonna make you embrace this you know like i'm not gonna ruin it like i'm gonna take away everything that's keeping you from doing that you know i'm gonna take away this father figure i'm gonna take away your good name and i'm gonna take away your assistant you know all the your ties to humanity so there's nothing left but this and you can like be like me you know once you take away all those things you're just like me and you like we can do this shit together you know that's kind of what it seemed like he was doing, but then at the same time, he's trying to kill him. I mean, look what, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just, full of motivations weren't that clear. Like he, he went from like, I feel more alive than I ever been, you know, like I'm not giving this up. And then he was like, I'm gonna kill as many people as I want. And just, he became a villain like that, you know, like, <laughs> I get it, he doesn't have the moral, like, problem that the hero does, you know, like, you know, uh, I need to feed on people to survive, but, like, it goes against my morals. Like, with him, it's more a case of, like, I need to feed on people to survive, so that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, 
And, you know, he kills people, but he kills people off screen. You know? Although, there's one thing that I do know about the movie. There was this scene in the movie where this nurse got killed. And <clears throat> Morbius got blamed for it, and he got that's why he got locked up. And when they asked him about it, he was like, he probably he thinks he blacked out. And he doesn't, they ask like he did it or not. And, and up until this point, it's been presented like he very well could have. He could have, like, lost control and, you know, blacked out and just killed a nurse that he was actually fond of. He could have done that had, like, he allowed the blood that was, like, in his that he'd if it had been like a long time since he'd fed the movie was like hinting like yo Morbius did did this man like one minute he was in the lab next he was in this hospital watching the sick girl and <clears throat> while he was there the nurse died like she died around about the same time he was there it could have been him he very well could have done that I wish the movie had stuck with that I wish that the movie had been like yes this was Morbius's doing this was not Milo's character. It would have added to the thing of like, yo, I can lose control. I really do need to keep a lid on this thing. Because even though the blood drop, like he didn't feed for a while, or he didn't feed on humans or whatnot, he seemed to have really good fucking control over this thing. So this thing of like, no, this is a curse. You should, like, you, you shouldn't want this. I can't control it. Like, you can. You've been doing it for, like, the whole damn movie. You just need blood. You even... <clears throat> you have control over who you do and don't feed over. There was a scene in the movie that was, like, hinting that maybe he was starting to slip when his, like, face changed in front of the woman he cares about. And it looked like he was looking at her like that. Like, he really wants to feed on her. He really wanted to feed on her after she cut her finger. But he's able to snap himself out of it. And... Oh, right there, man. It's just like, yo, if you're able to just stab yourself out of it like that, this isn't really that much of a problem. This is a problem, but it's not that kind of problem. But anyway, um, yeah, the fight in the sewers when dude summoned all those bats and they pinned down Milo and he was able to stab him through the heart with that poison. That was that was a good fight and it was hard hitting and brutal, but it was too short. That's my that was that was just my my gripe on it. It was too short. That's all. Oh, and, oh, in the end, you know, he summons a bunch of bats, flies off into the ceiling, I mean, through the ceiling, out into the night. The girl that he thought was dead, it's like, she wakes up, seemingly in, having been infected by his having to bite her, you know, but, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, this movie ends, uh, Vulture comes in, hope the food's better than this joint. And there's no scene where he's like, hey, Dr. Michael, you and I should stay in touch. And there's no scene where Toombs is like, got tired of the whole hero thing, huh? What's up, Doc? That's not there. There's no scene where dude walks past a picture of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man with the word murder on it. Like, dude, where are those scenes? You Like, is that why this movie was fucking delayed? So you could cut those scenes out? Just... Oh, why'd you feature him in the first place? It's just, ugh. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, well, that's that, man. The review of uh, Morbius, the living vampire. I think that's the... No, 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 no. It was just called Morbius. Fuck. Yeah, it was just called Morbius. That's my S&W experience review of Morbius, the living vampire. 5.9 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> that'll be that. As always, people, you can't have dill bread <laughs> without dill dough.